Hello, welcome to this week's mini Bible studies as we prepare for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, June the 27th, 2021. And if you wish to have some kind of uh, interaction as best that we can, please leave comments below the video and either on the YouTube channel itself or on our Facebook page and I will be sure to see them. Let me begin today with the introduction to the theme for this Sunday, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, and then the prayer of the day, then our first reading for today, um, sharing with you the introduction to that, then the reading, then some of my reflections. So the introduction to the theme for Sunday. <clears throat> A woman finds healing by touching Jesus' cloak, and a girl is restored to life when he takes her by the hand. In both cases, a boundary is crossed. In Jesus' time, the hemorrhaging woman was considered ritually unclean, polluting others by her touch. And anyone who touched a corpse also became unclean. In Mark's gospel, Jesus breaks down barriers from his first meal at a tax collector's house to his last breath on the cross as the temple curtain is torn in two. We dare to touch Jesus in our uncleanness and to live as a community that defines no one as an outsider. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So our first reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost comes from an Old Testament book we don't often hear from. It's called Lamentations. So Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 through 33. First, I'll read for you the introduction to this reading, then the reading itself, and then share with you some reflections. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust where may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and filled, be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Lament. That's defined as a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. The Bible book, Lamentations, certainly fits that definition. Its authorship is attributed to the prophet Jeremiah, although that cannot be accurately confirmed. Why it would make sense is because Jeremiah was a witness to the fall of Jerusalem in the year 586 BC. The Jewish people of that time believed that the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, and the exile of certain people to Babylon was based on judgment from God, and that the Babylonian king was acting as an agent of God's judgment. Today's reading provides words of hope in understanding that God's love and faithfulness are steadfast, even when feeling overwhelmed by trouble, grief, and sorrow. 
If we focus only on today's verses of hope from the whole book entitled Lamentations, we risk missing the point. And indeed, the point of the entire book in which these verses are found. The entirety of Lamentations expresses unimaginable trauma with personal, political, social, and theological dimensions. What if everything we relied on for our security, comfort, identity, sense of God's presence, and hope in the future simply vanished overnight? Now, right now, someone might be thinking, well, we did experience that in the pandemic, although I would suggest that what we craved most was the social aspect of life. We still had our homes, food, clothing, telephones, the internet. We had worship online, security, identity. We did have a sense of God's presence, even if we could not gather together with our friends for in-person worship. What we had experienced compares nowhere near to what the Jewish people experienced in the destruction of their city, their temple, and their lives. In our present American culture, we make every effort to avoid suffering. We have an abundance of pain relievers, prescriptions, and over-the-counter. Whenever someone asks how we are, almost always we will answer, fine, even when we're not fine. Someone once told me that the acronym for the letters F-I-N-E really stands for frustrated, insecure, neurotic, and exhausted, which may actually be closer to the truth that we either don't want to share or think the other person really doesn't want to hear. If something is wrong, then many of us want to know how to fix it and forget it. Asking someone else to hear about our pain in detail would be considered, I don't know, selfish, maybe even cringeworthy. We should grin and bear it especially in the Christian communities where the triumph of Jesus' resurrection can be used to pressure people into rejoice always or the call of Jesus to carry our crosses serves to stop any conversation about the reality of our suffering. The book of Lamentation asks us, it gives us permission even, to sit with grief, either ours or someone else's, and give ourselves time to feel the weight of that grief or sorrow or pain, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The opening chapter of Lamentations personifies the nation of Judah as Daughter Zion, suggesting that God and neighbor have not paid attention to her tragedy. The only people who do notice are the mockers who heap shame onto daughter Zion, compounding her suffering. She felt like there was no one to comfort her. Yahweh, the Lord, and her neighbors were not there to console her in her suffering and her grief. In the middle of suffering and grief, the cornerstone of faith is to call to mind our determined hope in Yahweh, in God, continually renewing Yahweh's loyalty and grace and mercy. Yahweh's steadfast love and faithfulness. There is some thought that suffering
can be constructive in helping us grow stronger. Verse 27 from today's reading is, it is good for one to bear the yoke in youth. The Apostle Paul speaks a little to this thought in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. He writes, We also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Neither of those is to suggest that we go in search of suffering. Although going to great lengths to avoid suffering that comes to us, or to suggest, oh no, that doesn't really exist, it, like, I'm fine, that's not recommended either. According to today's reading, God will eventually bring salvation, and those who had hope will be rewarded and presumably will increase their faith. The robust faith depicted in today's reading is part of a larger conversation about traumatized individuals and communities struggling through their own sorrow, grasping for a thread of that relationship with God. Today's reading and the Book of Lamentations as a whole should be carefully used to open avenues of conversation, of dialogue, of honestly sharing of our grief, our sorrow, our suffering, rather than trying to shut them down. It's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to talk to others about it. Thank you for joining me today as we prepare for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, June the 27th, 2021. Again, if you wish to leave a comment or a question in the comment section below this video, please do so and I will be notified that you did. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope you're having a great day. Take care and God bless.